Honestly, I wish this storm and drama would just blow over and everyone just moved to a new talking point. I don't care what it is, just anything else. And if you don't like the FSF's decision, cancel your membership, encourage others to do the same, and then just go about your day doing whatever else you do. I will disagree with the response, but I can at least respect it because it's the adult way to approach the situation. But this is 2021, and that's not how discourse works. Now, unless something major happens that completely changes everything we know so far, expect this to be my last statement on the drama. That doesn't mean that I'm never going to talk about the FSF or RMS again, but I'm not talking about this situation at all anymore. Basically, the day that I released my original video, this open letter was released, titled An Open Letter to Remove Richard M. Stallman from All Leadership Positions. Now, I know someone is going to say this before anyone says, but how could you defend Richard Stallman? He said so many bad things. I am not defending Richard Stallman. I am defending the principle of the matter. I completely disagree with a lot of the statements that Stallman made, which are being used as evidence to remove him from the FSF, especially things about the age of consent, because a lot of those statements were kind of yikes, and I, I don't know why he said them, but what I can say is I respect his right to be able to say them. He is an adult, and he can defend those positions himself, and if he needs to, he can get a lawyer to defend them as well, but I don't think there's any reason why he shouldn't be able to say them, even if they're really dumb things to say. You can go and see all of the things that are being used as evidence inside of the appendix. I will leave a link to it down below, so you can go and read it for yourself, because saying some of these words will probably get the video demonetized. It would be one thing if after, say, hundreds of members left the FSF, the board of directors decided, okay, so we brought Richard Stallman back and we lost all of these members. Maybe Richard Stallman isn't exactly a fit for the direction of our organization now and we should find someone else to fill his position. I could completely accept that situation, but that's not what's actually happening. So this letter isn't just calling for the removal of Richard Stallman, it's also calling for the resignment of the entire board of directors, along with removing him from the GNU project and effectively blacklisting every Linux conference that decides going forward they want to let him have a keynote. Now, when it comes to the calls to remove the entire FSF board of directors, I don't know what result they're exactly expecting because the board of directors, right, are the ones who run the FSF. So basically, the board of directors would be firing the board of directors. That's, that's never going to happen. But even so, let's just say they all just decide to resign for the betterment of the FSF. There's no calls to replace them. It's basically just saying, get rid of them and we'll think about that later. Which would effectively amount to the FSF, I guess, shutting down, because from that point, there's not really much else you can actually do. So there is no end goal, there is no improvement being suggested, there is no path for redemption for RMS or anyone else on the board. Basically, now they have been tainted and they are never allowed to be in FOSS again. It is just a call for destruction. If I had to guess an end goal, I would say it has something to do with a movement away from free and open source software and a movement towards things like open source and ethical source. Now you might be wondering, hey Brody, how did you get that conclusion? Well, maybe it's to do with the fact that a lot of people who signed this are from places like the open source initiative and also get involved in things like ethical source. Now, that's not to say that the FSF is the be-all and end-all of free software. There are other organizations that are certainly worth checking out, but I do find it kind of suspicious that the ethical source movement, other groups like that, are getting involved in this when they really have nothing to do with FOSS. Now, if the end goal of this is to see people treated more fairly in FOSS, that's a noble goal and I can respect that, but then the whole letter sort of just falls apart because... Nothing new has actually been said. All of the statements being used to remove Stallman this time are the exact same statements used last time. He hasn't said anything new in the past two years. In fact, the appendix actually links to an article from back in 2019 when he was originally removed. Stallman has already been punished for things he said in the past, so why is there now no path to redemption? If you want a good reason to remove Stallman from the FSF, he gave you one in the announcement where he said he was coming back, where he mentioned that they didn't actually know how to make a video to announce his return. 
that sort of shows how out of touch Stallman and members of the FSF might actually be with modern technology. Honestly, I don't expect this to be the end. If the FSF bows down and removes Stallman, there's going to be another target. Whether that is, say, Linus Torvalds again or anyone else it could be, there will be another target. And movements like this really do give FOSS a bad image. Rather than just speaking about problems like adults, trying to form a mob and remove someone from the entire industry is not a good look. So currently this letter has... 2,855 signatures. But this isn't the only open letter. There was also a second one made in response as well, and this is an open letter in support of Richard M. Stallman. And basically, this letter is calling for the FSF to just approach the situation like adults. Consider the history of RMS as someone who is very, very abrasive, who will say things in ways that most people will think about the feelings of others, where he will basically just say it in a way that gets straight to the point, even if it's going to offend everyone around him. And this leads to a lot of misunderstanding and misrepresentation of his comments, and what he said should be considered in this context. Now, when I was originally planning this video, I believe this letter was only 200 signatures up. Initially, it was lagging way behind, and people were like, yes, people are in support of removing Stallman, but at this stage, it is 1,400 signatures ahead. No, it doesn't have the same level of industry support where you have directors of things like the Gnome Foundation or you have Mozilla supporting it, but it does generally have more signatures, and it sort of depends on how the FSF actually weighs these, whether having a couple of industry supporters is more important than a thousand more signatures. As was to be expected, when initially there was a lot of Russian signatures on this, there was a lot of people saying things like, oh, there's a bunch of Russian bots signing it, but what was actually happening is there was a couple of Russian news sites and Russian forums that I, I guess are quite popular that were talking about this. So, Haber.com, Linux.org.ru, and OpenNet.ru as well. And this sort of just demonstrates that the idea of FOSS does exist outside of the US and English-speaking countries. And that's not to say that only the support letter had this wide culture of signatures, even the anti-letter had this one as well, but the point I'm making is that these ideas sort of cross borders. Now, as to be expected from there being about 7,000 total signatures between the two letters, the FSF has actually released a couple of statements. The first was this preliminary statement released about two days after the two letters were released, where they basically said, we will adopt a transparent, formal process for identifying candidates and appointing new board members who are wise, capable, and committed to the FSF's mission. We will establish ways for our supporters to contribute to the discussion. We will require all existing board members to go through this process as soon as possible in stages to decide which of them remain on the board. We will add a staff representative to the board of directors. The FSF staff will elect that person and the directors will consult with legal counsel about changes to the organization's bylaws to implement these changes. We have set ourselves a deadline of 30 days for making these changes. The board will meet again Thursday, March 25, to consider the decisions. Which, honestly, there is nothing to complain about with. This is just the process they should have had the entire time. The fact that they didn't already have a really transparent process for electing board members is the thing that is more confusing. Later that same day, they released another statement saying that an FSF union staff member will be chosen to be a voting member and director on the board, and this person will be elected by the staff as soon as possible, along with pretty much just clarifying the original points they made. Now, there is one extra thing that did happen, so... The FSF president, Jeffrey Newth, I'm going to say, announced, I commit myself to resign as an FSF officer, director, and voting member as soon as there is a clear path for nude leadership, assuring continuity of the FSF's mission and compliance with judiciary requirements. Rather than having the entire board step down, which would have been completely unreasonable, the president is stepping down himself. I don't know if I'd call that a good result, but it's basically the best you're going to get. 
And then as of three hours ago, one last statement was released, which basically puts everything into a nice little bow. So they say the board voted unanimously to post the following statement on the FSF website. While our primary mission is freedom for software users, we want to be clear. The FSF board unanimously condemns misogyny, racism, and other bigotry, as well as defamation, intimidation, and unfair attacks on free thought and speech. Which I think is fair to say pretty much clears up what's going to happen to Stallman. There is one last statement that I want to make though, so regardless of whether you're a supporter of Richard Stallman, you're anti-Richard Stallman and hate him with every fibre of your being, or if you're just somewhere in the middle, please don't harass anyone who signed either of the letters. Doing that just creates way more division than there needs to be, let people sign the letter they want to sign, and just be done with it. And then once all of this passes over, just accept the result that was made, and then go about your day. I've spoken to a couple of people in the past who are actually on the removal letter, and they're generally nice people. Most of them have good intentions. I don't think any of them are bad people, even if I do disagree with them on this one thing. And I'm sure I don't need to be telling you guys this. Anyone who normally watches my channel, I've noticed, has a pretty level head. In the original video I did on RMS, there was maybe one or two people who were just acting unreasonable. Most people, if they did disagree with me, disagreed in a civil way, and that's all I can really ask for. Honestly, there are some really cool Americans out there, but can I just say that I wish your politics would just stop invading everything. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Montezar, Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter, Lee, Stephen, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, leave and pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.